Welcome to the next session for Aligned, the summit that's dedicated to all things B2B sales and marketing alignment. I'm your host, Jeremy Boudinet, Director of Marketing for Ambition, and my guest today is Jeff Kirkchick, the VP of Enterprise Sales for Next Caller, a high growth company in New York City. I'm excited to hear his story today. Jeff, glad you're part of the summit, man. Yeah, thank you for having me. My pleasure. And so start by telling people your background, uh, what Next Caller is, and sort of what you guys have, have been doing here for the last three and a half years or so. Sure. Um, so I guess a little bit about myself. I'm originally from Boston, Massachusetts, so a very proud uh, Boston sports fan. Hopefully that won't make everyone uh, turn this <laughs> off right away. Um, I, uh, I, I went to Princeton University, and actually all, all three companies that I've worked for um, to date were founded by a Princeton alum, so very grateful for the alumni network. Um, I started out uh, working at a couple different companies. One, one was in the mobile payment space, one in the higher education space, um, and joined Nextcaller uh, almost four years ago and moved to New York City uh, to be their second employee um, when I was kind of weighing various opportunities, I felt that there was the, this was the highest risk, highest reward scenario for me. And, um, you know, at the time had no real, uh, um, serious obligations, no wife or kids and wanted to take risks while, while I still can afford to do so. Um, we got into Y Combinator shortly after I joined the company. Um, it had nothing to do with me, but, um, we did get into YC right after I joined company, which was pretty um, instrumental for our growth, just having the, um, you know, kind of the mentors that we have there. Um, Next Caller is, uh, does a couple things. We are a company that focuses on data. Um, so we can take phone numbers and turn it into lots of information about customers, lots of applicable use cases there, whether it's for um, enriching programs for SMS marketers or using it in call centers as a caller identification tool um, to mitigate back and forth between callers and agents. Um, we've all had um, scenarios where we've got on the phone with customer service and had a bad experience. Um, Jeremy, your last name is Boudinet, so I'm sure you've had to spell your name over the phone many times. It's, 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 uh, I, I just go ahead and just start doing it immediately. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Feel, you, feel that, yeah. And I'm Kerchik, so it's the same thing. Um, so that's one, one side of our business. The other side of our business is focused on phone fraud and authentication. Um, the phone channel is surprisingly a very large um, opportunity for criminals to commit uh, fraud, uh, whether it's you know, top banks, insurance companies, um, even hotels and airlines, um, retail as well. There's been a big migration to the phone as a channel for fraud, and um, we are on the cutting edge of solving that problem. So that's a little bit about Next Caller, a little bit about myself, and, um, uh, and yeah. Nice, man. No, great, great rundown. You guys, uh, like us, Y Combinator, and uh, have been on a exciting growth, uh, growth spurt here recently. So tell us about, um, you know, the, the key initiatives you've been doing. Really, you've been with them uh, in a sales leadership role for, for going on close to four years. I'm sure you guys have changed a lot in terms of how you've organized and structured your sales team, in terms of your outreach processes. What are the, some of the, the, key evolutions that have happened uh, over the last, you know, three years and eight months for you guys as you've grown? Yeah, I would say that the key, the biggest um, key would be simplification. I think um, uh, it's pretty easy to get wound up and doing a million different things, even from just a product perspective um, or it, even in your outreach to customers um, and, and wanting to be everywhere at once. And I think something that we've done really well over the last few years is really simplified things and made things pretty concise and easy to understand. Um, I mentioned earlier that there's a bevy of use cases for our data product. So by way of example, we've really um, cut down on the use cases that we want to be focused on first and foremost for that product. Um, same thing for our fraud and, and authentication product. There are certain verticals and in industries which um, we just by using some data, um, we have we have reason to believe are um, better suited for us, and we've been able to react to the data that we have in order to simplify who we're reaching out to, um, what the pitch is for that specific person, and and so on. Um, in doing so, it makes it pretty easy to give 
um, everybody has a, a pretty specific role. Something that, that I really care a lot about is, is, um, is, is ownership, um, which maybe we'll talk a little bit about, about later on. But I would say, yeah, the, the key for us has been um, simplifying things. Um, when, you get, when you first get started, um, you, you don't really have much data to rely on. So you have to throw a lot of, uh, you know, shoot a lot of arrows in the dark, if you will. Um, but once you have enough information, if you're doing a good job tracking things in Salesforce, um, you, you use that information to now simplify rather than expand, um, which I think is counterintuitive for a lot of sales teams. Talk to us about how you really scaled things down and what it was like choosing what to focus on and how you knew, you know, how narrow to go and, and really where to zero in on. Yeah, sure. Um, so like I said, it's fairly data driven. Um, we have a lot of pretty great, um, impressive customers, um, several fortune 500 customers, um, some, some of the hottest, uh, tech startups that are on the rise are, are using Nextcaller for, for various different use cases. But what we eventually sat down to do is really just look at each, each customer um, across each use case and looked at how many, res you know, how many resources we were devoting to try to generate business for that use case. And eventually it became pretty clear, like while we were making money in certain areas that if you looked at the ROI in terms of like what an ounce of effort got you in return, that it didn't necessarily make sense to be doing outreach in, in, in those areas. Whereas in, you know, in certain other um, use cases that we looked at, um, the, the return was much higher. Um, and that's where, that's where we need to be putting quote unquote ounce of effort instead. Um, so this was, I guess you could call it maybe some sort of come to God moment, but like I said before, it really has to do with, tracking all of the information. I can't stress how important that is. It's something that we struggled with early on in our business, um, which we've become much, much better with. And uh, we were able to literally just use the data to get an understanding of um, where we need to be doing our outreach. Certainly for certain use cases that we're not doing outreach on, um, we'll still support them. Um, but what we found is that, um, you know, fraud and authentication is a very, um, important line of business for us. We have incredible validation uh, there. We also have incredible validation for our caller ID product as well. Uh, we have some great customers that are using it. They're saying great things. Um, generally speaking, it's, it's very easy to set up a conversation. There's a real business need. Um, whereas with some of the other use cases, they were more situational. Um, customers that might be coming to us to look for something and that we were unable to replicate with, with others. And those are the ones that maybe we, we, we start to, uh, to, to, uh, to put to the side. Sure. And how do you communicate to your sales team? You know, here's the new focus. Here's, here's where we're, we're shifting things. You know, how do you kind of keep them in line with, with what the, the new, uh, what the day is telling you, what the new kind of uh, focus of the team overall is uh, as, as you, you've evolved? Sure. Um, so we have very open lines of communication within the business and within each business unit. Um, within my team, I run something called the daily standup every morning at 9 a.m. with my team, which is kind of a, a misnomer because the daily standup is actually every other day. <laughs> so it's Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, so I guess it should be called like the bi daily standup. Um, but I guess, you know, nobody's really, no, no one's really bugged me about it enough to change the name. So, um, so yeah, we, we have meetings fairly regularly, um, where, um, we address, um, all sorts of different things, whether it's upcoming conferences, events, or where prospecting, um, should be focused, even just the important calls that are happening that day, giving everybody an opportunity to speak about what they're doing that day, um, I think creates a level of transparency for a lot of different people within the organization. Um, it's also a two way street. This isn't just me talking at the sales team about, you know, whatever I want to talk about. Um, this is uh, something where everybody's pretty involved, an opportunity to raise questions and concerns um, that they, you know, would otherwise not raise to me during an individual one on one meeting. Um, so I think that, yeah, having, having that, uh, that touch point every morning, as a, as a start to the day, or I guess every other morning is a, is a really good way to just keep things fresh for people. Yeah. So just having a daily, okay, here's, here's 
where one's at or a buy daily, if you will, for you guys. <laughs> and uh, here's what we're going to focus on. And I love it, man. So, uh, so that's kind of how you're, you're focusing and aligning your sales team. And what are the various roles, by the way, that are in your, your front office teams? Uh, you guys got sales, business development, uh, support, all that sort of thing lined up? Yeah. So you mean within the sales team or just the entire organization? I guess we'll start with, we'll start with the sales team and we'll expand. Sure. Um, so it's pretty standard. Um, I manage a team of AEs as well as a team of SDRs. Um, I focus primarily on our enterprise customers, but I will um, help out on some of the um, conversations with the AEs where, where they'd like to bring me in for some sort of guidance or assistance. Um, everybody on our team um, has a sense of ownership. And I don't say that, um, I, I guess th this is a concept that's really important to me. I don't think you give people ownership of things um, just because you want people to, to um, you know, feel good about having ownership over something, you, you give people ownership of things because they, they earned it and, it, and, and it's something that's good for, for the company. Um, so if I were to look at, like, you know, to answer your question a little more granularly here, um, there are members of the sales team who have ownership over specific items that still kind of funnel up to me. So by way of example, conferences and trade shows um, are a big part of our lead generation strategy. Uh, we meet a lot of people in person at events. We do a really good job of setting up meetings at events. Um, I have a guy on the sales team who is responsible for researching all the events throughout the year, submitting speaking proposals, um, helping me to coordinate um, with anything that's trade show related, just by way of example. Um, I have a person on the sales team who um, is responsible for Ambition, um, which is your guy's product. Um, ambition is a, is a pretty big part of our, uh, the motivation for our sales team. Um, and this individual is responsible for making sure that our SDRs are strongly motivated and staying close to them, making sure that competitions are running smoothly, that people understand how the competitions work, um, for kind of smack talking during the week to get people excited. Um, that's this person's role. And I found that um, this is great because, A, this takes the onus off me to do all these things, right? If you're running an organization effectively, you, you, you have good people that, that you, you trust to do a good job handling the you know, various responsibilities, and you enable them and you empower them by giving them ownership uh, of something. And... Um, you know, I, I found that it's been, you know, it's, it's, been, it's been really good for us to make sure that every person on the team um, is able to uh, share some responsibility because there's a lot going on to make a sales team successful and um, everybody plays a role in, in doing that. Absolutely. And what metrics um, have you found to be like, what, what are you tracking? Is, is there a particular like way that you've, you've figured out, okay, this activity, um, these activities, these objectives, um, you know, really are what matter most. How'd you kind of like settle in on that as far as your just day-to-day -day outbound process? Yeah, um, well, we track a lot of different things in Ambition and in Salesforce. Um, you know, the easy ones for SDRs, things like the, um, just their general activity, like calls, emails, LinkedIn activity, et cetera. Um, but ultimately what we care about is, you know, qualified meetings. We've been able to work out ways where we can um, look at the quality of a meeting and assign certain value to uh, a meeting uh, to better incentivize the inside sales team. Um, for the outside sales team, um, we're, you know, we're looking at close ratio. Uh, we're looking at, you know, things like deal size, things like that. But obviously, if we're unable to move things from, uh, you know, to the next stage within a certain period of time, um, I can actually get alerts for, for, for those types of things. And that's where I can jump in to help out. Uh, we just started using a tool. I'll give a quick shout out. My friend actually started this company, but a tool called Troops um, that integrates with Salesforce into Slack, basically. Um, so I can essentially, you know, basically where I'm communicating with my sales team, I can actually pull data from Salesforce at the same time um, to, to correspond with, um, you know, with my team and to literally show them what I'm seeing to say, hey, 
you know, why, why are we getting X result or why are we getting, you know, what do we have to do to get to Y? Um, so this, just, this stuff just makes it easy because there's, again, there's transparency. Sometimes we show people where, where they, you know, you, 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 sh you suggest where there should be some improvement. Um, it can be a little clearer or stronger um, or perhaps less offensive when you can kind of, you know, show um, the data behind, uh, you know, where your questions are coming from, if that makes sense. We're investing in both ambition and truths. That's, uh, that's the recipe for completely data-driven transparency in uh, how your team's performing. Um, and can you tell me, what is the number one sales and market alignment strategy you think that's driven success for you guys? You have achieved 40% month-over-month growth. 14 consecutive months, what is it? Was there a, a turning point or a new strategy you adopted and how you were, you know, aligning your teams or aligning goals that really pushed you guys over the top? Yeah, so I'm uh, probably going to be um, a little different than a lot of the other speakers in this event because we just recently formed a marketing team. I mean, we're, um, you know, we, we hit the point maybe six months ago where we officially, um, branched off to have a couple actually people from the sales team um, start running our, our, our marketing, um, you know, our, 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 our marketing strategy. So, um, you know, for a long time, that was something that the sales team was kind of do, you know, trying to handle all at once. And to some extent, the product team because things as it pertain to the website, for example. Um, but yeah, now that we're really up and running um, fully functional, I think, uh, this will sound a little bit cliche, but I think communication is key. Um, when it comes to the weekly steering meeting I have with our CEO, that's actually a steering meeting that the marketing leader is involved in as well. We do sales and marketing meetings together uh, with our CEO because we, we very much feel that the strategies of both teams um, need to be clearly outlined to each other. Um, in other words, if the marketing team is running off and pushing you know, a certain product and I have the inside sales team pushing something else, obviously that makes no sense. So we need to be um, in constant collaboration with one another. I think the other thing too, is that I, I've talked about transparency quite a bit. So I hope I'm not beating, um, uh, you know, I, don't, I hope I don't sound like a, a broken record here, but um, it's pretty clear uh, with the marketing team, they, they, they outline what they're working on in a shared folder for the rest of the team to see where they are in the queue of what they're working on. So everybody has full visibility into what the marketing team's priorities and objectives are and how they can help. Um, the marketing team also does um, like a bi-weekly meeting where it walks through some of these things and explains to members of the sales team how they can be involved or how they can help out um, and vice versa. I have a monthly, a monthly sales meeting for the team in which we explain um, some of our goals and our misses uh, for the last month and, and what we want to do moving forward. Um, so I know people don't want to be wrapped up in meetings all day. Um, that's not what we're doing. We're doing this, you know, like I said, weekly or biweekly, typically these types of things, but otherwise um, we're constantly putting our roadmap uh, in a place where everybody can see it. Um, and that way there's no excuses for not knowing, um, you know, what's going on with our, our friends over in the marketing team. No, great call, man. I think, um, you know, you guys have really kind of figured out a very, very well integrated, very transparent. That's amazing transparency that you guys have achieved. And the fact that you didn't even have a, a marketing team to support you for, you know, the first, first, the last three and a half years, you know, hats off. <laughs> that's all yep. Yeah, it wasn't easy. <laughs> um, but that's the way it is when you're, you know, a four person company. Um, you know, when I, when I started, there were three other guys, uh, the co-founders and, the first employee and then myself and uh, there were four of us sitting around a table together and everyone had to wear a lot of different hats. And I'm sure a lot of people listening to this can relate to that because they've probably done the same exact thing. Um, as you grow, things can get disconnected very quickly. And, and definitely in our early days, there were some disconnects between um, different teams, you know, maybe product and sales would probably, was probably the, the biggest disconnect you know, in terms of um, communication. And you understand that, you know, whether you're a 10,000 person company or even a 25 person company like Next Caller, um, it gets important pretty quickly to develop these guidelines. Um, as much as you don't want to get corporate real fast, you kind of have to. Um, you kind of do have to write these rules uh, up front uh, to make sure people follow them. Because if you don't, um, 
things can get out of control a lot faster than you'd expect. So that's something we had to learn the hard way, maybe in our first year. Um, it's a difficult lesson for anyone to learn, but fortunately, um, it's one that we learned quickly and we were able to able, it, it, we were able to fix. Love it, man. You guys have really, uh, it's great to see the great things you guys are doing. Can you tell people where to find you and where to learn more about next caller? Sure. Um, yeah. So our website is just nextcaller.com and, uh, maybe even by the time people hear this, our, our new website, courtesy of the marketing team will be live fingers crossed. Um, I'm, uh, my email is Jeff at nextcaller.com. It's Jeff with a J. It's a little caller ID joke for, for the listeners out there. And, um, <laughs> Feel free to reach out anytime.